Can you believe I just woke up like this? Anyway, um, catching a flight today for the first time with an infant. So, priority for the morning. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Um, still haven't finished packing. We are due to be out the door in an hour and a half. And currently giving her some floor time. Because she's not going to get much on the flight. So as part of my research for flying with an infant, I have followed everyone's advice that they've given me. It seems that the only advice that people could give me, though, was feed her on the way up and on the way down. That's it. That's all the advice that people could give. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to do that. It might be a bit hard because she doesn't really like to feed for very long and I can't make her if she doesn't want to. It sounds like she kind of wants to eat now though. Okay. This should be fun. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. This is how I get ready. She watches. She lands. A great look. What's up? Welcome back or welcome to my channel, Intrepid Tales of Quirky Girl. Today are my top five tips on how to fly with an infant. I am a new mum. I have a three month old daughter named Olympia and we had just gone on our first flight. It was only an hour and a half flight and then we had a four hour drive on the other side. So I won't be talking about the road trip in this video because I'm making another video about that. We're doing a massive drive at Christmas time. Uh, it'll be 13 hours each way, so 26 hour road trip with an infant. So if you're interested in how to do a massive road trip with an infant, subscribe so you get notified when I do post that one. Just so you know, uh, we flew with Virgin Australia and I could not fault them. They were lovely, lovely, lovely. Would highly recommend um, to fly with them in general and especially with an infant. The flight going down was perfect. Olympia slept the whole way, so... That was brilliant. Uh, it was a morning flight though. On the way back, it was an afternoon flight and she didn't have a good lead up. She only slept for 20 minutes when we got on the flight and then she had a meltdown, which she often does when we're at home at that time of day. So I kind of suspected that that would happen. So bonus tip straight up is book a flight at a time when you know that your infant is most likely to sleep. Just makes it easier for everyone. But for now, let's get into it. Tip number one, when you're going through the airport, use a baby carrier. So you can have baby to the front, your, what do you call it? Carry on, carry on luggage and a backpack on your back and then your hands free to do whatever you want. Unless you've got one of those um, space age prams that you push a button and they transform themselves into this cube that you can put in the overhead locker. Um, I just, I don't think a pram is necessary to go through an airport. Uh, just makes life a lot easier for your carrier. Unless you might be doing like a long layover or something, then that might be handy so you can do what babies do in a pram in a long layover. I did try this with Olympia, but she is at a stage at the moment where she wants to see the world and she's too little and too young to face outward in a carrier. So when we were lining up to check in, she actually was screaming because she just wanted out of the carrier. But the airline staff were really quick to come up and be like, hey, let's get you through. Um, so she expiated my trip through check-in and then security. Thanks. Tip number two is actually when I was reaching out to all my mum friends uh, about how to fly with an infant, they were all saying, feed on the way up, then on the way down, it helps with their ears. And that was pretty much the only tip they could give me. So I did, I fed Olympia on the way up, which helped calm her and put her to sleep, which was fantastic for the start of the flight. 
Um, but on the way down, when we were flying down, she was still sleeping. She slept for the whole flight. So I was like, do I wake her and put her in the boob and risk her screaming, which sometimes she does do if you try to force her, force her to feed when she's not ready for it? Um, or do I just let her sleep and then run the risk of is becoming an issue and then her waking up? So I ran the risk. And luckily it worked because she didn't wake up she slept the whole way down so that was fine on the way back she was having her meltdown so it was um, she was refusing to feed so I wasn't even trying to do that I was just trying to entertain her and sing to her and and then that worked eventually tip number three is to pack spare change of clothes for your baby and for yourself Especially if you've got like a reflux baby or a spewy baby. No one wants to sit in that sweet smelling Smell that is baby breast milk spew Ugh. So don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your baby and don't do it to those around you Hey puss Take a change of clothes. No one wants to sit and spew for longer than necessary uh, And also punami you know what I mean. Next tip is to pack. Whoops, don't kick the tripod. Hee <laughs> Next tip is to pack light. Okay, so yes, pack light. Um, when you're, I mean, for the you'll carry on, you, you've got an infant to deal with, and especially if you're in my situation where you were flying alone, you, you don't want extra stuff stressing out or weighing you down so pack light pack only what you need for that flight I only took one to two toys for her that's all an infant needs if she gets sick of those I sang to her I talked to her I told her stories and I just went and made crazy faces at her and that's enough for an infant um, to be entertained so pack light and keep it minimal for the flight Following on from packing light, my next tip is about your nappy change. So airport, airport, airline, plane, plane toilets are not grand spaces. Uh, so most people, normal nappy bag doesn't really fit in the toilet. And let's face it, it's like a flying port -a Who wants to put your whole nappy bag in that? Oh, that's gross. So I just took like a small thing, um, which was big enough to fit a nappy, uh, some wipes, and, that, and oh, and a change mat. I carried my change mat on the outside to lay down in the on the change table in the toilet. This is just I don't know why, but my dentist gives me one of these filled with goodies every year when I go. And it's just too heavy duty to warrant throwing to landfill. So I just try to reuse whenever I can. And it's also clear as well. So you could put in your travel liquids or your carry on. I digress. Point is, I could just pick this up, take it to the toilet rather than having to deal with this big nappy bag. Keep it simple. Bonus tip. Aren't you lucky? Okay, so bonus tip. I thought I was being smart by being prepared when I got on the flight and put everything that I thought I would need for Olympia in the seat pocket in front of me. Um, that works, it, it did work. However, um, I was sitting on an aisle seat. I chose that one just in case I had to get up because if she spewed or whatever, if I had to get up in a rush with her, I didn't have to climb over people, um, personal. Personal choice, you choose where you want to sit. Uh, but the lady opposite me on the aisle, she had an older baby, looked to be about six, seven months ish, and she'd flown before. And what she actually did, which I'm going to steal the idea for next time, is she had one of these supermarket bags, which just sits open and it's small enough, perfect, just to sit under the seat in front of you, even for takeoff and landing. I don't know about other domestic flights around the world, but in Australia, so long as the bag fits under the seat in front of you, you can put it there. Um, and this is perfect because you have to deal with zips or clips or whatever. And then just anything you need for baby, you can reach and get it. It's a bit daggy, but 
if you're a little bit more fashion conscious then you can use like an open tote or something but this is handy everyone's got one um, and it was just a really good idea when I saw her using it so definitely 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 doing this one next time side note uh, packing for the flight um, <clears throat> I accidentally had to use a carry-on suitcase for my check-in luggage because I forgot last time I used the check-in suitcase it broke and I had to throw it out and I hadn't replaced it and I'd forgotten so I had to cram everything into a carry-on size suitcase so what I did was firstly I made a list of everything I needed to take I do this for all my trips anyway um, but definitely when traveling with an infant write a list and do it ahead of time so because you always forget something uh, and then you can every time something pops in your mind you can add it down and then when you're packing you can just tick it off yes I got this yes 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 and I don't cross it off the list until it is in my suitcase and it's not coming out uh, that way I know that I have not forgotten everything and that way when you're away you just have to make sure you've got everything in the bag you're not having to go through the mental checklist of have I got you know the right stuff because you know you've already got the right stuff because you wrote the list. Second packing tip that I did was I used travel cubes. Travel cubes, they're a game changer. They come in different sizes. Um, this is the smallest one that I have. I'm sure you can get smaller, but Olympia baby stuff is small. Okay, and she doesn't need enough clothes to warrant her own suitcase so it does go in with your stuff so if you compartmentalize your packing all the baby stuff was in one or my stuff was in other other things i had however you want to organize it i had different things in different travel cubes and so i opened my suitcase i knew which cube i needed to grab for what it made it super easy super easy to super simple to pack i should say um also, this is not really a tip, more of a fact, which you probably already know, and I don't know about other airlines around the world, but I definitely know international flights and domestic flights in Australia, you are allowed to check in up to three baby-related items. So that'd be pram, porta um, car seat, etc. Now, I've had to take a car seat because I was doing a four-hour drive on the other side of the flight, so I didn't want to just chuck my car seat on the flight because baggage handlers. Um, I always just wanted to protect my car seat a little bit and not have straps flailing everywhere. So I bought a car seat travel carrier thing, which is really cool because it was on wheels and it has um, straps you can wear as a backpack if you're really keen. Um, but I used the wheel function. Um, so after you put the car seat in its travel case, there is a lot of room left. Use this room. The airlines don't mind if you put extra stuff in there, as long as it's not weighing too much. I put in um, extra blankets that Olympia lays on the floor for tummy time with. They're light, so it, it probably added like an extra 500 grams to the total, So and but they're bulky, so they wouldn't have fit in my check-in. So I put it in the travel bag for the car seat. I also put in her nappies in there because they were too big and bulky to go into my suitcase. So I used all that space. Use it, it's there for you. But if the airline does have a problem with it, just make sure you do have space in your suitcase in case you need to transfer. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what I packed uh, for flying with an infant. Um, but if you do want that video, if you are interested to know what I did pack, then leave a comment below and I'm happy to make that video for you. So that's it. That's my tips for flying with an infant. So just to recap, we've got from packing to use travel cubes to use the space in your car seat carrier bag if you're using that. Uh, write a list, make sure you haven't forgotten anything. And to, what else did I say? Remember that the airlines uh, will allow you three bulky items to check in for your bed. I hate medical blinds and it is so windy here today. <laughs> and for the actual flight, 
use a baby carrier to get through the airport if your baby likes that, feed on the way up and the way down, have something small and compact to do a nappy change, have a bag under the seat in front of you that you can just reach whatever you want, uh, or whatever you need I should say for the flight, and pack light, one to two toys, um, and a change of clothes because nobody wants to sit in a mess. Okay, that's it for today. Um, if you liked this video, like, it does help. Subscribe if you want more of this stuff and definitely if you want to hear about the road trip video. Otherwise, see you next time. Perfect timing. Look who has awakened. Hello, Olympia. Hello, 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 hello. Mm. <gasps> you kicked me in the jugular. Ah. You can do it again. Ah. Ah. Uh oh. Hey. Hey. Hey.